My next guest founded one of the most active touring dance companies in the country. AIM isn't classical ballet, it's not jazz or hip hop or even modern dance. It's what choreographer Kyle Abraham describes as a postmodern gumbo of movement exploration. And we are thrilled he is joining us this morning. Welcome to New Day, Kyle. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes. How would you describe AIM for someone and its mission that's never heard of this? Sure, it is just as you described this postmodern gumbo. I'm really interested in bringing a lot of stories together, uh, primarily black and queer stories, but the work really goes beyond that. It's also thinking about hip hop and ballet and contemporary forms, but also adding a lot of social commentary to the mix as well. And that's been at the root since I started a dance company. Wow, and when did you start this dance company? I started it in 2005, 2006 when I was in graduate school. Wow, is this always a passion that you wanted to get into with dance or? Yeah, it really is. I think ironically, I got kicked out of uh, Catholic school on the first day for dancing. Uh, but <gasps> no, I always, you did not. <laughs> yes, I did. But I've always <laughs> wanted to be a choreographer. Uh, I think for whatever reason, it just really was something, you know, when you get your friends together, you say, oh, stand behind me, let's make a couple steps. It was yes. always something that I've been drawn to. Wow, incredible. And, you know, what do you want people to know that aren't in the world of dance and are going to maybe this show for the first time? What do you want their takeaway to be? You know, I think one of the things about dance that always drives me crazy is that people say, I don't, I didn't understand it. It's like, you don't have to understand anything. Did you enjoy yourself? Did uh, you like, did you find something in the program that you really connected with? And I think the beautiful thing about this program in particular is it's a program of repertory works. And by repertory works, I mean it's a series of several different works that you'll see, and in this case, by several different choreographers. Wow, and walk me through your creative process as a choreographer yourself. It changes pretty much every time, <laughs> but some of the constants are that I, uh, a lot of times I'm dancing and videotaping myself dance, and have the dancers learn whatever I did. And then we get together and work on different nuances and directives of why am I doing that? Maybe it should be a little slower. Maybe you should try it on the other leg. Things like that are all part of the conversation and the creative process for me, for sure. I love that. And how are you finding these incredible dancers um, you know, that are coming to you? I've, I've watched some of your videos, and there seems like there's a process to that as well. Yes, we have very long audition processes. Uh, I, a lot of times I try and bring in other choreographers as well and other directors because it's really crazy to think about one, maybe like 500 dancers auditioning for one role. So I'll try to maybe have three or four different artistic directors in the room, and we all go through a process of um, teaching different phrases, different sources of material, and have the dancers learn that, and then you have to have an interview process. Ooh, uh, yes, it's, okay. been, it's been very informative having, <laughs> having that part. <laughs> and what are we watching here, if you can see this video? Yes, you're seeing excerpts of If We Were a Love Song, which is a oh. suite of works all set to the music of Nina Simone. Wow, incredible. And what can people, you know, what's their takeaway from this show? Well, this work in particular is really intimate. You're really getting a lot of these songs that are really kind of connecting with ideas of love and longing and in some cases loss. Um, but uh, this section in particular, I think a lot about community and how we can celebrate the community and the history of uh, a lot of the choreographers that I've been inspired by. People like B.B. Miller, whose work is on the program, not in any ways related to Andrea Miller, who also has a work on the program. Wow, and yeah, who are some of your you know, inspirations or people that you look to or other choreographers? Yeah, I'm really interested in this kind of conversation between past, present, and future. So having artists like B.B. Miller, whose work Rain is work that premiered in 89 on our program, um, I'm definitely inspired by her. I'm inspired by Andrea Miller, who's one of my you know, fellow contemporaries. Um, people like, of course, Nalvin Ailey, whose work I have several pieces in their repertory um, as they tour around the nation and the world. Um, yeah, it goes on and on. Camille A. Brown is a good friend of mine and someone I'm inspired by. But on the other end of the spectrum, there are people like Faye Driscoll who make um, really exciting works in a totally different way. Her work is sometimes at On the Boards, uh, so a different space than our show that's at the Moore Theater. Um, but I love the full circle. If you think about it like music, right? Like you can love Prince and you can love Dr. Drake at the same time. You can love Rachmaninoff love and you can all. like uh, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> you know, it's all good. You know. And how are you going to get a new audience or how do you want to get a new audience in those seats um, that might not, to your point earlier, you know, know like what am I watching? Do I understand it? You know, how do you reach them? Well, you know, I don't ever dumb anything down per se. I think it's really just this idea of how can you make something that people can connect to knowing that they're from all different walks of life. And that's something that I'm really thinking about. I think about this work that we saw a clip of, of If We Were A Love Song. 
I think about everyone in some way has experienced some kind of loneliness or love in some capacity, whether yes. it's love for a family member or a significant other, but we all have some kind of relationship with that idea. So you can see that, you can see kind of a dark, edgy side of things with um, the work by Andrea Miller, which is called Year. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of fun range in the same way that, you know, we just had that great segment with food. You know, it's a menu. There's several different um, dishes that you can kind of take Maybe some you like better than others. Hopefully it's not that thing where you go and watch a dance and you say, oh, I like that piece better than the other. Hopefully it's more, oh, I love this one work and I connected with this, or you connected with the whole program. And hopefully we get a lot of that. And there's a lot of room for conversation and discussion around what you like and why you liked it. And it's not, um, there's no hierarchy of uh, what's good or bad. It's just uh, different tastes. I love that so much. Before we go, tell me about your upcoming show at The Moor. Yes, it is on Wednesday, um, I almost said September, <laughs> but February. We are in February. <laughs> yes, we are in February. <laughs> uh, yes, um, Wednesday, February 21st at 7.30, which is a great start time for people like me who love going to bed at a good hour, you know? <laughs> yes, same here. Kyle, it was such a pleasure having you. And like Kyle said, don't miss AIM by Kyle Abraham this Wednesday, February 21st at the Moore Theater.